I'm the guy that every single business deal goes through. They had one reviewer on the site. It was me. You had a product or service. You would send it to a drop or you would let me see your service and I would test it. Then I would post the review. Depending on that review, because again, I was basically the guy. If I gave a good review, that seller would make a shitload of money. Mm. If I gave a bad review, that seller wouldn't do any business at all there. All right? Right. And my reviews came with a, with, with a guarantee. Hey, if you buy from the seller and you get ripped off, I'll cover your losses. I'll make sure you're recompensed. All right? And I meant that. So that, that helped establish that trust. People knew that if they dealt with this site and bought products, services, talked to anybody, they could come through me and the deal was good. All right? When Shadow Crew, when we transitioned over to Shadow Crew, we had become so big that you couldn't do that anymore. Not only that, but you start to get worried because now law enforcement's looking at you. It's pretty, it'll be pretty, pretty easy to identify where I am if you've got a drop address in an area and everything else. So you're picking up product, pretty easy to get a controlled delivery going on. So I started, I farmed that out to different re- reviewers at that point. So we had mods, we had admins, we had all these people in charge that would either ban you, let you have access to things, okay. take care of uh, any problems that pop up, things like that. Um, what goes on is uh, some of the people, that I had some very competent people in charge. I had some people in charge that I thought were competent that were not competent. My, uh, my second in charge, his name was Kim Marvin Taylor out of uh, Denver, Colorado. Went by the screen name of MacGyver, all right? 46-year-old guy. At the time, he was 46. And... Uh, he worked at the Tattered Cover Bookstore in Denver, all right? And I thought the guy had knowledge through the roof. I really did. Turned out he was just very well read. <laughs> so he, he, he would talk about fraud. He would talk about changing identities, how that stuff was done. And it sounded right. I mean, it sounded spot on. And he would talk about techniques that I hadn't tried before and stuff like that. So I'm like, man, you know what you're talking about? Let's bring you in. You can be the admin too. Everything's fine. So he becomes my second in charge. Now, what happens with this guy, at the same time this is going on, there's a gentleman out of Nebraska that's on the run for check fraud. His name's uh, David Thomas. So David comes to the Shadow Crew forums, and he's broke. He's begging for money. He's like, hey, help me out. So we take up a collection for the son of a bitch. Send him some money. I get him a job working with a carter. So the carter's sending stuff like coin collections to him, stuff like that. And then David is taking it to a freaking point uh, pawn shop, getting 20 cents out of the dollar out of it, not making any money for anybody. So three months of that, David comes back to me. He's like, hey, man, I need to make some money. I was like, okay. So I had these Ukrainian contacts. Reach out to one called Big Buyer. Big Buyer says, yes, I'll work with him. So Big Buyer sends David enough money. David was in Texas at that point. Sends David enough money to to go from Texas to Issaquah, Washington, right outside of Seattle. Gives him the money to move up there and to open up a virtual office. So office space where all these other businesses are coming in saying they've got office spaces, but you can get mail there. And the idea is, is that Big Buyer is going to commit credit card fraud, order the items, have them sent to David, David's going to get the merchandise and then relist the merchandise on eBay at 80% of retail, cash out like that. Because that's why you used to do credit card theft. You'd sell everything on eBay, get 80% on on the dollar for it. That's what you do. All right. So Big Buyer places an order. He places an order with Outpost.com, $18,000 order. At that point in time, it was the largest order that Outpost had ever gotten. What did Outpost.com do? Uh, electro- it was like a merchandise store, so electronics, oh, okay. uh, all this bullshit. It was electronics, jewelry, stuff like that. That's what I ordered. So uh, got $18,000 worth of merchandise, sent it, largest order outpost it ever hit at that point. And David gets the merchandise, happy as shit. Emails me, gets me on ICQ. Yeah, man, it's working. We're going to make a lot of money. MacGyver, Kim, finds out about it, messages me on ICQ. I want to go to Issaquah. Why do you want to go to Issaquah? To make some money. Dude, you're making money. No, I want to go up there. Okay, go be careful. He gets in his piece of shit Saturn, drives from Denver all the way up to Seattle. They meet and party all that night. Now, here's the rule back then. If you're committing credit card fraud, if a bank knows that there's potential fraud on the account, the bank shuts the account down. Well, back then, we had all the logins to these credit cards that we were stealing. Mm. So what you'd do is you'd place the order for Apple products or whatever you're doing, whatever merchant you were defrauding, 
the day of the delivery, you'd wake up early that morning, sign on to the credit card account. If you could sign on and access the account, the order was good, you go pick up the merchandise. If the account was shut down, you knew it had been flagged for fraud, you get your ass back in the bed. All right. So that day, because Kim and David had partied all night long, they didn't go to log in. They didn't check with Big Buyer to see if they could be logged in. Meanwhile, Big Buyer is pinging me to be at all hell. Hey, I need to get up with David. I need to get up with David. we got a problem. I can't sign into the account. They've not checked in with me. <clears throat> Nobody can find him. So they go to pick up the merchandise because during this point in time, Big Buyer has placed a second order with Outpost.com. This order, $17,000. The second largest order that Outpost.com has ever gotten. Five days, five days after the first order. By this time, Outpost knows the first order is fraud. So what do they do? They pick up the phone, call Issaquah PD. Hey, we got some fraud. Issaquah is like, can you guys send some uh, empty boxes? <laughs> so, so Outpost is like, yeah, we can do that. So David, he's got, he's got an old Cadillac. Kim's in the passenger seat. David's driving. David's girlfriend is in the back seat. They pull into the complex where they've got the drop address. Pull in there. As they're pulling in, David sees this van that's parked in the lot, and this guy's turned sideways sitting in the seat, in the driver's seat. David looks over, and he says, that's an undercover cop. Kim's like, nah. (laughs) So they pull up to the drop. Kim's like, I'll go in and get it. So he walks in, looks at the guy behind the counter. I think you've got some merchandise for me. Guy's like, one second. He steps behind a wall, out pops the Issaquah PD, arrest my second in charge on the spot. Kim, uh, David Thomas sees this shit going on, hightails it, beats a path out. to the, they, they arrest him on the interstate, they mm. get his, find out his real name, everything else. So David had outstanding charges. We couldn't bond him out. Kim had no outstanding charges. So uh, we couldn't pay for it with a stolen credit card. One of the other guys who helped build Shadow Crew, his name is uh, Seth Sanders, who went by the screen name of Kid. Kid got his girlfriend to use her credit card to bond out Kim Taylor from jail. All right? Stupid-ass move, but that's what happens. So we get Kim out. I put Kim on a bus to Utah to hang out with this guy that was willing to take him in, the guy that made uh, – uh, counterfeit driver's licenses he went by the screen name of midhack so midhack's like yeah send him down me and my wife will take him in so kim's there about three four weeks i get a call one night midhack actually calls me he's like hey man you got to get the son of a bitch out of here i was like what he's like man the only thing he's doing he he sits in a chair all day and just pops x all day long <laughs> i'm like what jesus christ like, that's all he's doing 46 years what a old. lunatic yeah, i'm like what the fuck <laughs> so I'm like, I get him on the phone. I was like, you got to go. He's like, where am I going to go? Well, at the same time, because I'm running all this bullshit, all these different operations and everything. I got this other guy, Larry Ruda, is coming from Los Angeles, moving his ass to Georgia, to uh, whatever that coastal city is over in Georgia. He's moving to Georgia. So uh, he's holed up in Denver. He's, he's had a stop over in Denver there committing fraud in Denver Mm. to get some more money to make the rest of the way in Georgia. I'm like, okay. So Kim decides he's going to partner with Larry. So he goes to Denver, gets in the hotel with Larry, and Kim starts passing checks, payroll checks. So what they're doing is is they're, uh, they're printing off payroll checks. And I didn't know it until it was too late, but they're printing off payroll checks, going down to Safeway, using the payroll checks to buy Marriott gift cards, coming back and paying the Marriott bill with the stolen Marriott gift cards. Needless to say, it doesn't take long to track those son of a bitches down. Right. So cops come in, arrest everybody at that point. Kim gets away from that. Now this is all happening as I'm retiring from Shadow Crew. Right, same fucking week all this is happening. I, what I end up doing, I end up, uh, I contact my forum techie, guy by the name of Albert Gonzalez. Contact him. I'm like, look, ban this guy. I'm out. 